Good morning. I am Lane Babson. I am representing PMZ. I am a project engineer, and our uh, project is the County Road 38 reconstruction in Goshen, Indiana. I'm joined by my team, who you'll hear from in just a few minutes. Along with, so the project summary is again in Goshen, Indiana. It is a reconstruction and redesign of the County Road 38. Uh, um, and then there's an addition of a visitor center on the north south, the northwest side of the intersection of Canada 38 into Canada 21. And in addition to that, there will be a stormwater management system of design. Along with being the project manager of this part, of this team, I am also the structural engineer. Um, and so specifically, the structural scope um, includes the material analysis of the potential materials that can be used for the building, the loading analysis with, um, to determine uh, potential loadings, both of the material weights and the loads that occupancy will provide, um, along with the occupancy determination, um, how to use the space, and um, building design itself. So um, it will be a two-story visitor center, um, at least 40,000 square feet, in the area, and it will have an attached outdoor space of 1,200 feet. The first alternative I have is a concrete building with a preliminary beam height of 18 inches. Um, with that beam height and some restrictions on um, depth and length ratio, uh, makes the big base sizes of the concrete around 25 feet to 25 feet by 35 feet. Um, and so with those base sizes, the floor plan ends up looking like, as you see here, um, some potential ideas for how to use the space include lobby areas, event spaces that can be split up and rented out to groups that want to have conferences or events in the visitor center, as well as a museum that features the history and the, uh, <laughs> the history of the, the city or county and there can also be space for a little gift shop or an info center for travelers who are passing through. On the west side, there's a deck that will face the fields in case anybody wants to come and watch the sunset. And the floor frame for the first alternative uh, looks like this again, with the base sizes being about um, 25 feet by 35 feet. Um, just calculations for the length and width ratios of the bay and also the length and depth ratios from um, the length of the beam into the depth of the bay. All are in are near what concrete um, should be, but is subject to change with further analysis and design. The second alternative is really similar, similar uh, shape and similar usages. The difference here is that it is made of steel, so there's different length to width and depth ratios, which um, makes the base sizes are 20, 23 feet by 30 feet. Um, and then again, the fitting plan here is similar with the similar length to depth to width ratios. The third alternative is a little different, just a rectangle, um, where the deck is on the second floor rather than the first floor, and the spaces are divided up just a little bit differently. It's another concrete structure, um, and these base sizes are 20 feet by 30 feet. And with the um, floor framing plan, this is about what it looks like. Again, you can see the 20 feet by 30 feet base. Something that will be designed next is where the columns are. Um, all of the intersection of these lines here are where a column would be placed with these bays. Um, and so the next step to my design would be determining how the uh, space usages um, can be maximized so that there are columns in the walls and not in the middle of the rooms. So again, with the future work includes um, figuring out where those columns could be and how to design the rooms. And um, once I analyze an alternative, I'll analyze it um, against factors like economy, which is most economic, which one um, is most feasible, 
which one has the least environmental impact and which one's function is most closely aligned to the client's requests. After I click on alternative, I'll work on the building and the more specific floor design. I'll turn it over to our transportation engineer, Ethan Thank you. Steam testing. All right, I'm Ethan Thank you. I am the transportation engineer for PMT Engineering. And the transportation scope involves improving safety for all modes of transportation along County Road 38 and upgrading the level of service. As you can see from the site plan, we have a complete redesign of the intersection at County Road 38 and County Road 21, along with construction of a multi-use path that will go along County Road 38, and the extension of the existing center turn lane, along with a path underpass that will go under the bridge and reconnect on the Kircher Road, and a parking lot design that will accompany the new visitor center. So the existing conditions on the roadway include a high through volume on County Road 38 along with a signalized intersection with a channelized right turn lane. However, there is no pedestrian crossing, which is a huge concern for our redesign. And as you can see from the level of service table, the total level of service is level of service C, while east and westbound is level of service B, and north and south approaches are level of service C and D. And as of now, the east and westbound approaches are adequate at level service B. However, we expect the north and south approach to decrease with the presence of new trips from the visitor center. This is alternative one. It is a signalized intersection with channelized right turn lanes. This alternative will aim to improve the traffic flow by providing traffic in the streams and improving pedestrian crossing safety as the presence of channelization tends to slow drivers down as they enter the intersection. This alternative two is a single lane roundabout. It has pedestrian crossings connecting each island, and this would be, this would be the safest alternative for pedestrians as they would only have to watch one way of travel as they cross each island, and the geometry and alignment of a roundabout will cause them to slow down their entry speed. However, this alternative would cost the most as roundabouts cost a lot of money. And alternative three is a signalized intersection with three approach lanes on the east and west round approaches. And this alternative aims to improve the capacity of County Road 38 as having dedicated left and right turn lanes would, uh, will, cars wouldn't have to wait for turn movements to happen. And will, however, it is less safe for pedestrians as they'd have to watch multiple ways of traffic as they try to cross. And this is the multi-use path. It will connect the existing path on the corner of Kircher Road all the way along County Road 38 up into County Road 21 into the residential areas. It will be 10 feet wide to accommodate two lanes of travel for multiple modes, such as walking and biking. And the realignment will include the path, the center turn lane, and two lanes of travel. For future work, I will complete the traffic impact study to determine how these new trips will affect the roadway network, the parking lot design, uh, evaluate and select the best alternative, and to begin more detailed design work. I'll pass it on to our water resource engineer, Andy. Thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Andy John. So I'm a water resource engineer working for the CR38. So now this case shows the water resource scope. So we will do the improve the water quality, reduce the ventral loading by 70%, I'll improve the service to infiltrate or filter at least 1.25 inches of runoff. We also designed a system to control the strong water runoff and improve the water quality. So for the drainage design, one is for the buildings and the parking lots, the other is for the roads. So the next page is the drainage design for the winter center. So the first graph shows the winter center design area. And the next graph is the uh, contour map. So we can find a pink mark here. So the pink mark shows the strong water runoff directions for this area. So the next page is the drainage design for the roadway. So you can find the blue part is the design area. So also, 
this graph shows the country map and it shows the strong water runoff direction. So now I will introduce the uh, three alternatives. So for the first one, the drainage design for buildings and the drainage design for the roads, we will use the green drainage system and that system will look like these pictures. And for the green drainage system, it has the small surface footprint and it can reduce the metro loading effectively and can ignore the most turning factors. So let's see the uh, general compositions of the system. So for the brown one will be the ground. And when the strong water goes inside the system, it will pass the four layer. So for the first layer will be the water source layer. So that layer can keep the water. And then the water will go inside the bleach layer. So in this layer we will put some plant here, such as the tree, like the these pictures. And this uh, this uh, layer can uh, reduce the water, strong waters, the metro loading. And th then the strong water will go inside the transition layer and uh, it can clean again. And finally, the strong water will go to the drainage layer. And on both sides, we have the fixed pail which can keep the system uh, stable. So, for the winter center design, we make the green drain system over here. The reason we do that is just the, the strong water runoff direction for this area is from the northwest to southeast. So, the green drain system over here can make sure that the, it can maximize the collection of the strong water. So, this is just the drain design for the roadway. So, we make the uh, the green drainage system just uh, on the both sides. So for the next uh, alternative, we will use a different method. So for the drainage design for buildings, we will still use the green drainage system. But for the drainage design for the roads, we will use the sump system. And the sump system will look like these pictures. And the sump system can reduce a uh, repeat treatment of strong water, and it has the lost cost and can reduce the metro load. Let's see some the general uh, composition. So at first, the strong water will go on the high road, which is the green one, and then it will go through the plant one, which is like the green, uh, the green one. Sorry, and the water in that part will be treated. Uh, will be treated and uh, can reduce the metro loading and uh, improve the water's quality. And then the strong water will go through the cover and uh, inside the pump, uh, inside the sump. So this map shows the locations for each system. So for the building's design, we still use the green drainage system as over here. And uh, for the road design, we use the sump under the pipe. So we, for the subsystem, we add some pipe to connect it to the river and the pond. The reason we do that is just the, for the total run, strong water run of, uh, total strong water run of the direction is from the west to the east. So it can help the subsystem to collect the maximum strong water. So with the same reason, we have the final alternative. So for this alternative, the drainage design for buildings and the drainage design for the roads will use the permeable pavement. So the general composition will look like this graph. Um, so the purple one will be the pavement, and uh, the strong water will go inside here and uh, go past here and uh, inside the underground water strong layer. And on both sides, we make some plants one, uh, so I just to make sure that that water can reduce the metro load. So for the pavement, it has the low maintenance causes the effect the treatment of roadway, uh, road water problem, full utilization of the land resource. So let's see the location. So for the orange one will be the area for permeable pavement. So and the underground layer on the, under the each area they are connected. We also have the pipe to connect the, uh, to keep them connected the pump and the river. So, final one is the future work. So, for the future work, we will complete the 
cost that analysis, uh, alternative selection, strong water valve control design, and the parking lot water treatment design. All right, thank you for your time. Does anyone have questions? Yeah, that's it. So, yeah, so your project extends across the river to the east. Yeah. So what about the runoff from that side? You didn't show anything for that side. Is, is that going to, are you going to manage that stormwater? Yeah, that's the stormwater. So, um, so like this design, um, the, uh, so we find the stormwater runoff is by the puncture map. Right, but the road, the road, the, the extent of the project goes to the, across the river. Yeah. It? Yeah, of course. So the reason we make uh, the system like that just uh, for the uh, the outer area, just that uh, 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 behind, uh, sorry, just the includes the building design and the the roadway call, roadway design. So for the total area, they have the the direction is from the west to the east. So, and we mix the pipe, uh, like the, here, just uh, we want to make sure that that strong water can go through the pipe to the pump and the river. Okay, but yeah. to, to the east of the river, yeah. the, the road work that your team is working on, the scope includes road to the east of the river. Is that, is that correct? Yeah. So what about the storm? The storm water on that side of the river, I think, flows from east to west. But you don't show any storm water management practices there. So what about that storm water? Um, well, on that storm water, I think um, it, um, we maybe just do a short things for that part. Because the, for the, the counter map, the total the total way is from the white to east. So I we think that we can uh, make sure that that water will so most of the strong water will be treated. Okay, and then like for your your alternative one is the the building site, right? Uh, yes. And then your alternative two is a road. Yes. So I would say that. That's really alternative one. Like together, that's alternative one. Uh, yeah. Well, there may. I'm uh, sorry. But there may be some difference. So for the first one, we will use for the, all the area. We will use the green drainage system. Um. So that system just uh, can. They, they don't have the pipe here. Mm -hmm. So the water cannot through, uh, go through the pipe to the pump and the river. Mm -hmm. So that strong, the strong water will be uh, treated uh, just the inside the system, and then they will go through the go past the, the layer to the underground. Okay, but but on your alternative one, you're just focusing on the building. Uh, this one. Yeah, right. That's just the building, right? Yeah. And then alternative two is just the road. But really, your whole project is both those. So I would say that's. Alternative one and two is really one alternative. So what I'm trying to say is you need more alternatives. You okay. need more stormwater treatment practices. Okay, we will do that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Pastor. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I have a couple questions. Uh, so it does relate to I think your green kind of zone going down the road and also on the transportation side, kind of using that same area uh, for your multi like multi use path, you have the ten foot. Uh, so there's two questions initially. One is, uh, does like the city or the county have access to that 10-foot width? And then how do your two plans overlap on the transportation and the water side in that, in that width? Um, well, for the first questions, we, so this is the general uh, conversation. So, we will make sure the wife just uh, can. Oh. Yeah, so the multi use path will have a, as Andy said, a whole drainage system of its own where 
would probably go beneath the path. I believe I haven't looked too much into it, but that is a concern. Okay, so there, so you'll work together to kind of see where yeah. the different elements are. And then on the drainage side, if you, Andy, if you go with the system that doesn't have the piping, if you just go with the green system, are you concerned that you could, in the case of overflow, send a bunch of water into the neighborhood, into those those houses and uh, in the neighborhood if it's not controlled well? Because you're kind of encroaching on the housing part in one part of the whole area. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so that's... Um, for the yeah the, for the first one um, is um, we just uh, to use the the gravity to make sure that the strong water will make sure that will go inside that system um, so and for the design area we just uh, try our best to make sure that the system can be work. Okay. I mean, there are some parts that are um, like non-residential along your like road, and then there's some parts that are very near to the residential area in that one part. So maybe considering um, those and different options for those areas. And, and you also right, you have to control the rate of runoff from the design flood, right? Like a large rainfall event. Yeah. So I'm not sure that you're, what you're showing will be able to do that. Um, we have some calculation, but we are not done for the flood control. Okay. So for the future work, we will do oh, sorry. For the future work, we will to finish the, the flood control design. Okay. Just, and, and so you have the water quality design. Do you know the water quality volume? Uh, you have to. You have to. Treat the water quality uh, volume. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you know that volume? Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's why I'm using just the. Uh, sorry, I forgot the number. Okay. That's I have that on the memo. Okay. Can I ask a question about, I have a transportation question. At least, so, so that's for Ethan. So I, I don't know much about transportation. Yeah. Um, but I, so I had a question about your intersection. I think it was alternative three. Yeah. Like, so you got three lanes on the east-west road, right, for the, the approach lanes, and two on the north-south road. Like, is there some kind of preliminary analysis design that, led you to having three and two like that? No, I just saw that the main concern for this project, or one of the main concerns was capacity issues mm -hmm. are coming from Goshen. And I know that County Road 30 is a high through volume, and so I assume that more approach lanes would improve the capacity. However, I probably need to look more into that. Okay. And then, do you know how many pedestrians are in the area? Because it looks like there might be not a whole lot. Then I, but then I saw some houses. Yeah. <laughs> no, along Cairo 21, there's a huge residential area. Okay. And that's what the multi multi use path will connect to to bring those people down to Cairo 38. Thanks. Can you, can you go to the uh, roundabout? Yep. Yeah, I didn't see it long enough to see it. You said something about crossing from island to island. That yep. You've got to get to the island also, right? Yeah, so the spaces in between the uh, curves where there's like no no image and it shows the existing, that's the uh, where the islands would be. And it doesn't show for some reason on Bistro, but where the, the right turns are, in the middle it'll have a crossing that'll connect to each island. Okay. So, so really then, as you, if you're walking, say, from east to west, mm -hmm. and you want to go across the whole thing, you, first you look at the ramp uh, vehicles that you have to cross, then you get to <coughs> the island, then you've got to look to the left for people coming onto the rotary, and then the 
the second part would be the other exit, right? Yep, it's a, lot, it's a long process, but you'll have to watch them one way the whole time. Well, except when you're going from island to island, you got to look to the left and the right to cross, right? Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Oh, uh, <clears throat> it's, it's the way it is. There's just, not much you can do about it unless you want to build a bridge over the top. Obviously, it's not going to work. Okay, I, like, I just want to see that diagram. <laughs>